a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Oh, hello there. Well, it's me, Harbor Master. I'm looking for my pencil again. Seems I'm always misplacing my pencil. This, this is a Viking helmet. See, Viking ships explored the oceans a oh, thousand years ago, and it just so happens that we have a Viking ship visiting us here in the harbor now. And he looks just like Viking ships used to look a long, long time ago. So I decided to wear a special Viking helmet to make him feel at home. It does make me look different. And if you didn't know me, why, you might even say it makes me look kind of strange. But sometimes we have strange ideas about others. The tugboats discovered that just the other day when our special visitor arrived here in the big harbor. Let me tell you about it. It was early evening. The sunset was like a crimson scarf over the edge of the harbor and a low mist hung in the water. The tugboats were returning to the great ocean dock after a long day's work. Hank and Theodore floated up to each other until they were almost bumper to bumper, face to face. Then they whistled and said, Hello. Hello. Well, that's the way tugboats say hello. Then they all gathered around the dock. Now came Theodore's favorite time of all, the time when the tugs all told stories about their day. What did you do today, Emily? asked Theodore. George Fodak and I moved a cargo ship, replied Emily. His name was Beiderbeck, and he was from Germany. He had a big load of... Ah! A big load of... Ah! said Hank. Do you mean apples? said Theodore helpfully. It was then that Theodore and Hank realized that the other tugs were all staring at something. Wow, said Theodore. Yow, said Hank. There, appearing out of the mist, was the strangest looking ship the tugs had ever seen. He was all made of wood and had a big flat sail with an odd pattern on it. He had a long, wolfy head with big beamy eyes and powerful looking jaws. What, who is it? said Emily. I've never seen anything like him before, said Fodok. Do you think he's dangerous? said George, and he rumbled his engine bravely, but not too loud. He's coming this way, said Hank. Someone should go and say hello, said Theodore. The other tugs all turned to Theodore. Theodore put on his friendliest face and floated right up to the strange looking ship until he was almost touching its wolfy snout with his bumper. Then, he let out a loud, welcoming whistle and said, Hello. The way tugboats always said hello. Well, the most surprising thing of all happened after that. The strange-looking ship backed up a little and snorted <coughs> right at Theodore. Well, Theodore was so startled, he turned and hurried back to the dock. Now, that wasn't what he had expected at all. That night, the tugboats couldn't stop talking about the strange-looking new ship. He snorted at me, said Theodore. The question is, said Fodok, who is he? Where did he come from, said Emily. What's he doing in our harbor, grumbled George. He looks like a wolf, said Hank. Suddenly, the tugs went silent. The strange-looking ship was floating quietly past them. He was heading for the dock right next to the tugs. And it looked as if he meant to stay there. The tugboats all huddled together, just a little closer. No one told stories that night as they usually did. Instead, they all worried and watched the strange ship. The next morning, Theodore and Emily were heading off to work when they saw the strange ship again. He's just floating up and down the harbor, whispered Emily. Just then, Hank came pooting merrily along, pulling a barge. The strange ship silently came up behind him. 
What's he doing? Said Theodore in a hushed voice. It looks, replied Emily, that he's trying to sneak up behind Hank. Suddenly, Hank saw the strange ship. Hank turned quickly so that he was face to face with the ship. Then he whistled and said, Hello. Well, the ship backed up and snorted right at Hank. Just the way he'd snorted at Theodore when Theodore had tried to say hello. Yikes, gasped Hank. And he floated away with the barge as fast as he could. He had been so frightened by the strange snorting ship, his engine was pounding. Come on, Theodore, Emily called softly. Let's take the long way back to the dock before the strange ship sees us. But Theodore couldn't stop thinking about the strange looking ship. Why did he try and sneak up behind Hank like that, he wondered. And why is he snorting at everybody? That day, all the tugboats went far out of their way to avoid the strange looking ship. Because of that, everything in the harbor was taking longer than usual. When the tugboats finally returned to their dock, the dispatcher had stern words for them. Tugboats, he said in his most serious voice, ships have been complaining about how long it's taking to get to their docks. Can someone please tell me what is going on? It's that strange looking ship, said George. Yes, said Emily. He just floats up and down the harbor all day long. He snorts at tugs, said Fodok. He snuck up behind me, added Hank, and, and he has big teeth. Well, the dispatcher had to admit that even he had never seen a ship like that before, and he certainly was acting very strangely. Nevertheless, the dispatcher went on, I don't expect him to slow down the work of this harbor. That is all. That ship is very different, said Emily quietly. Once more, the strange looking ship stayed in the dock beside the tugs. Now, having the ship right next to them made the tugs all very worried. And they didn't tell their usual stories again that night. I have to do something, thought Theodore to himself. Just before the sun went down, Theodore decided to visit a special friend. Theodore hoped Rebecca, the research vessel, could tell him about the strange looking ship. See, Theodore thought Rebecca knew just about everything there was to know about ships. He looks like a Viking ship, said Rebecca. A Viking ship? repeated Theodore. What's that? Well, Viking ships sailed the oceans over a thousand years ago, replied Rebecca. They were great explorers. This ship in our harbor may be a brand new Viking ship. But, said Theodore, what is he doing here? I really don't know, said Rebecca. Well, I don't think he likes us. If he is a Viking ship, said Rebecca, maybe he just doesn't speak our language. Did you try to say hello to him? Yes, I did, replied Theodore. And then he thought back to the first time he had seen this strange ship and how he had tried to say hello. I wonder, said Theodore to himself, Emily was waiting when Theodore returned to the dock. Theodore, she said, nothing is the way it should be around here since that strange ship arrived, and no one is getting any work done. And no one tells stories at the dock anymore, added Theodore sadly. We have to do something, said Emily firmly. We have to speak to that ship right now. And without another word, Emily set off toward the strange looking ship. Theodore followed behind. Emily floated up, face to face to the strange ship, whistled, and said, hello. Well, the ship backed up a little and snorted at her. <laughs> Let's go, Theodore, Emily said to Theodore with a frown. He's just a mean ship. But Theodore turned towards the strange ship. He didn't really look mean, and when Theodore thought about it, the ship looked kind of sad. Theodore, said Emily, what are you doing? I'm going to say hello, said Theodore. And this time, Theodore didn't float right up face to face with the strange ship to say hello, like Tugs usually did. Instead, he slowly floated up behind the ship, just the way he had seen the ship float up behind Hank. And this time, the ship didn't snort. 
what it did was even more surprising than that. Hello, said the stranger. My name is Snorri, and I'm a Viking ship. I'm very pleased to meet you. Hello, Snorri, replied Theodore. I'm Theodore. I'm a tugboat, and I'm very pleased to meet you. Well, after Emily had gotten over her surprise, she floated over to Snorri and said, Why are you being so mean and, and snorting at everyone? I thought you were being mean to me, replied Snorri. I think, explained Theodore to Emily, it's just that Snorri has a different way of saying hello than we do. See, we tugboats always say hello by floating right up to each other face to face and whistling, said Theodore. I didn't know that, said Snorri, quite surprised. We Viking ships always float up behind each other to say hello. We think that when you come right up to us face to face like that, you're going to bump us. That's why I snorted at you. You didn't know I just wanted to say hello, said Emily. <laughs> she just had to smile. And all this time, we thought you didn't like us. I thought you didn't like me, said Snorri. I've been floating up and down the harbor trying to talk to someone, but everyone keeps floating away. Talk about what, said Theodore. I'm visiting harbors everywhere to tell stories about what it was like for us Viking ships to explore the ocean a thousand years ago, explained Snorri. This harbor is my first stop. And then he looked sad. But I haven't been able to tell a single story to anyone yet. Well, Theodore and Emily looked at each other. Were they thinking the same thing? The other tugboats were at the great ocean dock. Fodok was the first to see them. There was Emily and Theodore. And floating right in the middle between them was the strange ship. Hello, said the ship. My name is Snorri. And I'm a Viking ship. Well, the other tugs were so surprised, well, they didn't say anything for a moment. Hank began to float bravely forward to say hello, but Theodore went over and whispered, Go up behind him, Hank. That's how Viking ships say hello. Hank turned and came up behind Snorri, just like Theodore had told him to do. Hello, he began nervously. M -m -m my name is Tugboat, and I, I'm a Hank. I, I, I mean, said Hank, my, my name is Hank, and I'm a Tugboat. Well, everybody began to laugh, and their nervousness disappeared as if it had never really been there at all. That night, the Tugboats all listened to Snorri, the Viking ship, tell many wonderful stories of faraway places and long-ago times. And everyone agreed. It was the best storytelling time they could ever remember. Well, now Snorri and the Tugs are such good friends that Snorri has decided to stay on and visit with us here a little longer. He's still here in the harbor. And that's good, too, because it gives me a chance to say hello. And no matter how he says hello, I'll know that underneath it all, he's just the same as you and me. Just the same. I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> There it is. I always put my pencil behind my ear, or in this case, my horn. Well, same old me. I'm off to meet Snorri. Thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.